Hello and welcome back to the Blush Studio. If you're new here, my name is Katrina Crouch. I am the artist and educator behind Blush Design and this YouTube channel. Um, so today I wanted to share with you a video that's a little bit different. There might be like a small series on this, um, but during the COVID-19 crisis here in America, I took some time every day while I was home and um, went onto Instagram Live just to share like an, an you know, a, kind of a small art tip. At least they were supposed to start out small. Originally they were five to 10 minutes and they ended up becoming more like 30 to 45 minute discussions on um, whether it was like me actually showing them artwork or just discussing different things that I share on this YouTube channel. So whether it's like little tips or tricks and just kind of elaborating there. Um, but the content was really too good just to keep on to Instagram. So to keep on Instagram. So I decided to modify the videos a little bit and share them here. Um, so occasionally you'll hear me you know, referring to somebody by name. Um, sometimes I'll be like reaching up and tapping the screen and that is just a way that um, when somebody joins, I can kind of wave to them. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on during the live. When people are actually watching live, they can see the questions as they come in and they see that I'm like waving to them and everything like that. Um, but that's kind of why this video is a little bit different. You'll see that I'm kind of responding to questions or pausing for questions. Um, I did try to read the questions out loud because I did start thinking maybe I should put this on YouTube. Um, but just so you know, that's kind of why the format is a little bit different. Um, I'm not, you're not going crazy. There aren't people like in the video with me. Um, but I think that the content is really good and that you'll find it really enjoyable. So let's dive into that. So today we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, at least just have something that's a little bit more casual and um, just a little bit more playful to do today. Um, I'm going to be painting some of these fake eggs um, and just if you haven't seen so this is one I did the other day this is the only one I've really kind of completed and then I will be starting off today by finishing this one which I started um, but I have a couple of these these are like four bucks um, at Target and I think you can still order them online um, even though like my local Target doesn't have it. Um, to do this watercolor today, I'm going to work with my Daniel Smith palette. It's just kind of like what I've been playing around with and what I'm still testing out. Emily wants to know which Daniel Smith set. This is the Jean Haynes Master Artist set. Um, I've been talking about it recently. I'm still just kind of testing it out. So I've been pulling it out every once in a while so I can kind of form my opinion. And Usually it's been on more casual things like our lives. Um, and again, like it's a limp, it's a more limited palette, even though it has a lot of variety within it. There's 10 different colors. Like I don't have a brown in here, so I've had to mix my own brown. So I thought that that might be a good exercise that we could talk about a little bit as well. So I've got my water already poured into cloth just to kind of dab everything off. So to create like a little stand to plop the eggs in, I just cut off a toilet paper roll and it was still too big, so I just pinched it and stapled it with my very old stapler. So nothing fancy here. I just don't want to get a ton of paint all over my desk and make it you know, trickier to use. Hey Noella, welcome to the live. Okay, so this one, I just kind of went for it and was just playing around with different things. I love the blue kind of accent that's in here. I believe that was the Cascade, Cascade Green. Um, and that was a lot of fun just to kind of play that up a little bit. Um, in hindsight, I kind of wish I had added it a little bit to the lemons themselves and it could have had kind of a green mix in there with that blue highlight. Um, but this was kind of just a looser, just a fun painting. And that's really how I'm approaching these is that they're very casual, very um, playful and loose. I'm not being like super picky about how things turn out. And that's why I kind of think it's been fun. And then for this one, again, I'm not being super picky. You know, things aren't perfectly symmetrical. Just playing around with different butterflies. I might make a couple more on here, but I think I'm gonna add kind of some greenery in this negative space. Um, before I started this one, I took the Cascade Green, which is, if you've been here, when I've been talking about this palette a little bit, it separates into this 
more of a blue tone, even though it does have some green in there. Um, and so I just kind of played with that and then put some yellow bits in it and let it just drip. Okay, so for today, this is my eight, I think, yep. I think I'm going to be using the four. That's what I've been really favoring for the butterflies. Um, my four round and my eight, my six. So six is usually my go-to, although this month I've really been favoring my eight. I'm not even sure why, but that's just kind of how it's, how we've been working. So let's get this wet. Any ideas for what we should paint the next egg? I'm not entirely sure what I want to do yet. So I did the lemons because I knew I wanted to play with these more golden tones that I have in this palette. Which are all Daniel Smith, let me pull out the names. The nickel yellow and the Aussie red gold. This was the Aussie red gold and this is the nickel yellow. <clears throat> all right, I think I'm gonna do another one, these little bumbles real quick, just cause I like to have, if there's going to be something there, I like to have it repeated elsewhere. Although maybe I'll add the greenery first. Let's do that first. Okay, to start, I'm gonna do something that's like a brown stem. I just propped this up with my white eraser. So it's not too hard to see. So I would like to mix kind of a brown tone. So I'm actually gonna take the deepest color and the more neutral, and this is the Moon Glow. It has a very purpley undertone. Let me grab a scrap paper to kind of show you. So see how that has a more of a purple undertone, but it can be built up to be very dark. This one also separates, so that's how I know that it has um, a lot of, it separates into like pinks and blues, which when you mix those together, they make a very nice purple. So because I have purple here and I wanna make like a brown, I'm going to look at my color wheel and I'm going to pull the opposite color. So I've got purple and I wanna make a brown tone, so I'm gonna to pull from this golden yellow that I have over here. And that should help to create a nice neutral brown. If I have trouble getting it to be as warm as I want it to be, I might pull from this more orangey brown. Yeah, so this is kind of cool tone. It's kind of green, which tells me there's probably more blue in this than I'm giving it credit for. So we're gonna pull from the orange, not too much. So if there's more blue in it, that's why I'm pulling from the orange. Okay, so that's getting closer. Still not quite as warm as I want it to be. So I'm gonna pull from here. This color, this is my Aussie Red Gold. This is very concentrated. I found that a lot, a little bit goes a long way. Okay, and if we let that build up, that'll be a much nicer neutrally brown for if we do kind of some branches or something like that. <clears throat> All right, let's see, let me grab my four. And I'm just gonna kind of play with it, just kind of fill up this space and allow the branches to kind of lead the eye a little bit. So 
can probably mix this too watery. So I need to give it time to thicken up a little bit. But that'll help us to kind of map everything out to see how I want it without being too committed. How's that? Can you guys see that okay? So that's a little lighter than I want it to be, so I will have to go back again and build up that color. But I'm not against being able to kind of decide how I want things to go before I really build it up. Kind of decide what look I'm going for. This is the same brown, but when it was a little more concentrated, it got nice and dark there. So some of these just kind of fade off. All right, so while I let that dry a little bit and I let this dry on my palette, I'm gonna go ahead and play with some greenery. So let's bring in, oh, what color do we want to play with today? Which one's this? This is apple. Oops, come on. So that's my apple green and this must be my undersea green. I love how like rich and dark this one gets. So I like that, but I might play with this. Let me see what else we've got going on here in this composition. Well, I used the undersea green for this lemon piece. So let's mix it up, play with a different color today. Oh, this one separates too. See how that's, can you see that, how it separates and it's much brighter? Interesting. I don't remember that from my swatches. Let's see if that's just a palette thing or we'll let that dry and see what happens. Okay, so back to my four, I'm just gonna do some standard little generic leaves. And again, I got carried away with the water, so it's too wet for my tape, my liking. If you're doing something that's really loose and whimsical, which I did a little bit more for the lemons, having something that's, that's like way too big. <laughs> oh well. Welcome to the back of the egg. The best part about something three-dimensional like this is it can have the back side. And if I want that to be darker, I just kind of allow the color to build up. I do want there to be a variation. I find that like the variation with the greenery for something that's just more casual like this really helps to add some depth and some personality. I will probably, once that dries a little bit, pull from that more neon section just to lighten some areas up. We'll say that there's a little leaf sticking out from behind this guy. Make it a little lighter. So remember things that are lighter will naturally fall back into the background through aerial perspective. So things that are darker, the viewer's eye is drawn towards that. And so it appears to be in the front. All right. 
Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick and see if we have any questions about what's going on so far, and then we'll keep going. Emily says, I've been looking at getting Cascade Green. It looks fun and unpredictable. It is. It's um, If you're going for like a really pretty teal um, that has like a nice green undertone, it is super fun. Yes, she is. I researched her after I bought the actual palette. Because <laughs> um, I really bought the palette because I was looking for some to invest in some more Daniel Smith colors. And I... Um, I liked this one. I felt like it had a variety that I could actually use. Um, I don't use a ton of, I use a lot of greens. I use like yellows and I use some pink tones, but not a lot of bright pinks. <clears throat> um, but I don't use a lot of blues and I was finding that a ton of the palettes that I was looking at had a lot of, it was like mostly blue. Um, so I found this one. There was another one I was kind of tempted by that I might like go back and get another day. But um, for now, this was fun. So I bought the palette and I was like, you know, I should probably find out who this person is. And uh, kind of did some research. So her style is very different from mine. Very fluid. And oh, I killed my bumblebee with the paint on my finger. Well, that's okay. We'll, f we'll either cover him up, turn him into a flower, or we'll do something with him. I guess I should use my stand. That's what they're for, right? To keep bumblebees alive. Okay, lighten that up a little bit. But yes, yeah, she is very fluid, and so having this variation in her colors um, really works for her style. It's um, perfect for that. Not as ideal for my style, which is much tighter but it's been fun to play with. I've done a couple of paintings that were like, how can I strategically use this? Knowing it's going to separate, oh, see how that's kind of fun. Um, knowing that it's going to separate in ways that I can't control, how can I use that then to my advantage? So it looks like I did it on purpose. Because again, like we've talked about a couple of times, really one of your key things is to be to make it look intentional so if it looks like you made a mistake even if you didn't um, it can kind of throw off the viewer and kind of kill their enjoyment of the piece So now this color is a little more dry. I'm pulling more from the sections that are dry and just allowing the dampness of my brush to um, move the pigment around. That's how I tend to prefer um, painting, especially like detail items like this. I feel like it gives me a little bit more control and it's a little bit more like the um, colored pencil that is kind of in my background. Okay, so that's kind of fun. I think I'm gonna start pulling now that this is drying a little bit more. You see how that's separating? I don't know if you can see, there's like blue bits all the way around it. So not, not my favorite, but we can make it work. I think that still needs to dry a little bit more. So I'm gonna give that some space, as my son would say. Give it some pace. Okay, Emily asks, how do you make granulating paints look more intentional? Um, part of it is, at least what I've been experimenting with, is um, repeating 
those elements in an intentional way. So if I know it's going, so like in the butterfly I did, let me pull that out. So this butterfly that we did in our live, I think it was last week, the color separated here. And so I made sure that I repeated these colors or light colors elsewhere in the painting. So it looked like I did that on purpose. Same way if you were to take some paint, same idea as if you were to take some paint. So if I wanted this to be my flower, and I wanted a strategic highlight in it, so I would just kind of like tap it in and get that variation in color and allowing that to bleed. Um, that would be like intentional color mixing where the hard part about this paint is that it does it on its own, which can be like really exciting if that fits with your style. Um, it can be very stressful if it doesn't fit with your style like me. Um, but it, yeah, so that's kind of how I make, I try to make it look intentional um, in order to kind of save my sanity a little bit. So, cause again, my style, while I do have like some color that I pop in here, so like this, this butterfly, how many butterflies do you know have like blue speckles on them? Um, but then I have like this yellow accent in there to just kind of play that up. And that's very much part of my style, but I am very much in control of it. Um, so that's, that fits my style a little bit more than something like this that separates on its own. And I can't really control whether the pink shows out or whether the blue shows out. So that can be frustrating for me um, as an artist, just cause Again, it's not really my style or my personality. Oh, I think I'm gonna keep working on the greenery a little bit. Whew, did you guys hear that? I hope you didn't just hear my stomach. <laughs> okay, so let's, I've killed my bumblebee, so I'm just gonna put that down before I kill any other creatures. We'll just put a little butterfly over him. Call it a day. Put a little bumblebee somewhere else. And I will keep going back through here and like adding some lighter greenery behind just to kind of add some depth. So like this, this leaf that's really hard to see, um, but it kind of adds like a little bit of dimension there um, because it kind of creates, I mean, like it looks like it's way in the background. So it looks like there's more greenery behind just these couple stems that I have. I think I might actually, this one's so large, I might turn it into two. Let's really get some color on there make one of them come to the surface and now it looks like there's one like behind that guy and I actually like that really dark pop so let's repeat it put the egg back down before I kill another creature So a paint that might be easier to use than watercolor is like gouache would probably work a little bit better um, just cause it's thicker. I'm kind of using this light gouache because I am working pretty thick um, with very dry, with a, you know, almost dry brush where um, gouache is, is kind of like that automatically. But I don't have any gouache and I think we talked about it at one point yesterday or sometime this week. I'm not a huge fan of gouache, not because it really deserves it to be honest, but because I didn't like one of my college classes <laughs> where I had to use gouache for like a, the whole semester. So I decided that it was the gouache that was evil because I did like the professor.
the seam on the egg has given me some trouble once in a while, especially if I'm playing, applying color that goes on either side and I'm being a little looser so there's a little bit more water. Um, it usually will collect on one side and not on the other. So something to watch out for if you decide to order these guys. Start giving this one up. Okay, in a minute I'm going to pause for questions if there's anything you'd like to know or just like to see, let me know and I'll see, I'll try and answer. Caroline asks, what is the egg made of? I think it's just like, I don't know, it might be like a very soft plastic or it might be kind of like a cardboard with a paint over it. I'm not entirely... I'm not entirely sure, to be perfectly honest. It has kind of a papery feel. Um, and my son kept dunking it into the water, um, which I thought for sure it would disintegrate, but they're, they've been fine so far. We are starting to run out of time though. I forgot how slow I am at this. My son flirted around from like three or four different crafts and I was still stuck on the one egg. And this one's a little bit more complicated for me. One thing that's nice I will say about this color separating and me just like allowing it to separate on the palette is normally if I'm doing greenery like this I will have so I'll have my green and I'll have like either a yellow or a blue that I'm adding to the green so in this case it was a blue and for this one since I have the blue in the background probably would have done yellow probably this lighter yellow here um, and I would add that occasionally just to add a little bit of color variation to the greenery um, just I don't know adds a little bit of personality and a little bit of interest um, but I don't really have to because I just pull from the neon that is already being separated okay I'm gonna pull from here to get some darker color. I think I want this to be thicker than it is. I'm gonna add a little guy here. Let that collide with that little branch. I'll probably have to go back with one more pass on this guy. Just letting this color dry a little bit more so that it's just a little easier to apply a little bit thicker so i like to be intentional with every line so this one that kind of runs into the butterfly i'll probably have some greenery coming out on this side at some point just to help complete that story. I find it kind of awkward if something just kind of ends abruptly um, with a subject like that. So especially something that's a little bit more fluid and dancey like this, um, whatever this is that I'm painting. Is it like a tree? <laughs> Let's play around with this guy. Find out where he's gonna live. On this space a little. Put a pair to cover up that little bumblebee. Any questions really quickly before? Monica, do you put any kind of glaze on them after? Um, I probably will, but I don't know yet um, because this is my first time really doing this. Um, I've just right now I've just been hiding them from my son and that has been pretty effective so far but I probably will have to especially because if you see how that bumblebee separated out I don't really want that to happen again um, so either yeah I'm not sure what I'll do um, but if I figure it out I'll let you guys know
Okay guys, I do need to wrap this up. <laughs> um, but if you have any questions, feel free to pop them. I'm gonna add a couple more leaves. Um, and then I'm gonna have to close this out because I do have a client today. Is that a little bit more greenery? I might end up adding some little flowers on here, but I'm actually really enjoying allowing the color from the butterflies to kind of shine the most and just letting the greenery kind of add, fill in some of the space and add some visual interest. Definitely need to add some down here, don't I? So sometimes if I'm working with something that's a little looser, if I know that I want the space filled in, I'll put the greenery where I know I want it to be and then just fill in the stem later. So I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of that kind of lime, more neon green right in there. That's super fun. So I'm gonna let that stay there. All right, let's map out how this branch is gonna go. I want it to fall from here. Okay. All right, guys, I think that's where I'm going to close it out today. I hope that you are enjoying our lives still um, and just enjoying our time together. I know that I definitely am. Uh, let me know, send me some DMs, or I'll probably do another question box at the beginning of next week with just different topics that you're interested in talking about. Thank you so much for joining me, and until next time, happy painting!